Hey guys, welcome back to the Stash Project. We're going to look at another kit this week, and it is going to be the fairly new Honda Civic EF3 Group A race car from VMAX. Aoshima does the uh, distribution, so there are stickers on here too, but this is a VMAX kit and uh, not an Aoshima one. I see that constantly uh, being brought up because a lot of, uh, especially the Japanese export vendors like uh, Hobby Link Japan and Hobby Search will list this as an Aoshima kit rather than a VMAX kit. And while uh, Aoshima does have a hand in uh, some of the product development and a few other things, you know, VMAX uh, is the ones that uh, do this one. So spin the camera around, we'll take a look at this uh, new kit and what it has uh, in store for you. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, so the new, fairly new, it's a couple months old now. Uh, actually, really ironically, if you don't have one right now, you can't get one. Uh, the initial run of these sold out, and right now, uh, there are a few of them on eBay for an extremely uh, high price in terms of uh, what it's worth versus what it costs. Uh, so just hanging out and waiting for the next run to go through is probably your best bet as the prices right now seem to be in the $50 range, and this is not a $50 kit by any stretch of the imagination, either in terms of just general quality, which isn't necessarily a knock on the kit, but it's just not a full detail kit, so it's not worth $50. Uh, nor is that what the price of them uh, really are. The end cap price on these is 3,800 yen, which right now with the exchange rate slowly coming back into balance, unfortunately for us here in the United States, that's about $35, $36. And uh, usually you can get, uh, you know, another 25, 30% off ordering through Hobby Link Japan or Hobby Search, where that will then take the price down into the upper 30s, which is probably pretty reasonable. It is, this is a brand new tool kit, so uh, this is the first time this kit has ever been offered. Uh, this is not a, like a retool of the Tamiya, uh, or I keep calling it Tamiya, I'm, I'm putting too much emphasis on it, retool of the Tamiya uh, piece. Uh, these are the instructions here. They're a little bit different than your standard Aoshima instructions, but they follow that general sort of pattern. Uh, one nice thing about this is, yeah, it'll be kind of hard to show you because it's a little bit bigger than <coughs> the uh, surface I'm using here. But in addition to having all the, the uh, Mr. Hobby uh, Creos colors, which are the acrylic paint that they uh, offer in Japan, you get you know multiple languages of what they are. And over here, there's a uh, trans sheet for Tamiya colors. So if you're familiar with Tamiya acrylics, X2, XF, and all the rest of this stuff, uh, it is very quickly uh, determinable what color you need to use. There are several here, uh, field gray, neutral gray, burnt iron, dark yellow, and metallic red, which do not have Tamiya conversions on them. I will say that burnt iron is pretty much uh, the same color as metallic gray, uh, which is, uh, let's see, XF56, so much so that that's what I'm going to use on these rather than trying to find another burnt iron. I will say that burnt iron is a uh, color available in the... Um, but the metallic, the uh, testers metallicizer or metalizer rather uh, line, and then you know field gray, neutral gray, you know grays or grays or grays. You can figure it out from there. Um, beyond that, the instructions themselves are fairly straightforward. This page here, let me get it back. So there we go. We'll show you uh, basically the, your painting components on this kit as it comes straight out of the box. Uh, you do get just basically a white paint the body white, you paint the back bumper gloss black, half of the front bumper semi-gloss black, and then, you know, your window trim areas, if you choose to go that route, we'll show you why in a second, and that's it. Uh, the decals will do all the rest of the conversions here. On this, uh, on your regular instructions, and this is a, a standard for all BMAX kits, anything that's in a grayed out box, uh, such as this up here, is a representation of a uh, photo etch piece that uh, comes in the separately sold photo etch detail upset. So uh, there are always, of course, plastic pieces that represent the photo etch pieces as well, so you don't have to panic. You don't need the photo etch set. Um, you know, for example, here, this is just 
a seven, or you have the option of folding up a piece of photo etch into the same shape box. Um, they will also show optional uh, carbon fiber decals or optional decals if there's decals included. There are no carbon fiber decals in this kit. And, you know, beyond that, like I said, everything gray is photo etch, so there's you can sort of get a, a feel for what the photo etch uh, this, uh, kit is in this uh, piece here. It's things like the brake rotors, um, the uh, gas filler cap, the little racing antennas, the winch wipers, the uh, pieces you put in them to bolt off the gas tank because in the uh, actual race car there is, of course, a fuel filler, and they don't use the gas tank, gas tank, but since it's Group A, which is closest to stock in the uh, terms of the racing, you know, these pieces were just bolted off. As you see back here, there's a photo etch piece here, but it is molded in that allows you to uh, put the latch in that uh, goes to hold the hatch back down. You'll see up here, here's the plastic piece, and this is the photo etch version of it. But like I said, it's a very, very close to stock cars. While you see a lot of people who eh, questionably are, or not are trying to turn this back into some sort of form of a street car. And, you know, it's very clear, concise instructions. Everything's well laid out. And, of course, this back here is your parts layout that all Japanese uh, kits and most Revell of Germany kits also have, which shows you uh, all the parts on the trees so you can get an idea of A, B, C, D, and all the rest of these things here. <coughs> uh, along with your decal sheets. Speaking of your decal sheets, we'll go over to this one first. This is Window Surrounds. Now, this is the first uh, that I'm aware of in any kind of uh, newly tooled kit, other than perhaps uh, one of the Hasegawa Civics has something similar to this, but this one's way more uh, robust. This will basically apply to the outside of the window glass, and you can then not have to paint the outside of the window glass. You'll still have to paint the inside of the window glass for that part of the trim, uh, but the outside trim, this is basically be the window tr molding trim itself, you can apply these decals if you choose if you do not want to paint them. So there's an option there for people who don't like doing trim work. Uh, you can see that this is just sort of a generic little piece here. This will probably go over, you know, cover, go over into any other uh, versions that they choose to do. I'm going to leave these decals in their package because I know that this camera will shoot well through the uh, wax paper that I don't have to take it out here. But you see here, everything else that you need for this decal sheet, or for this build, is on this decal sheet. Uh, the black areas on the side and, and rear are done with these giant panel decals. Could be an issue as far as letting, getting them laid down. Uh, not not for sure if it's going to be or not. There is decal seat belts here if you do not have the photo etch set, which includes seat belt material uh, to do that. Uh, all of the white here probably doesn't show up real well through the decals, but there are white Civics and Primos and stuff like that. So it is a full decal sheet. There's, uh, there is nothing missing from it that I'm aware of. And another nice piece, and this is also something that all BMAX kits have, is a... This is like a color paper, uh, color photo paper, rather than just being regular paper, that has a fully uh, drawn out, in color uh, description of what the build should look like in, in its entirety. Uh, in terms of where the decals, decal layouts, uh, you know, trim paints, uh, the proper coloring of lenses, and things like that. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, like I said, BMAX is the only company I'm aware of that does this. It's kind of like the Mobius thing a little bit, where Mobius does some color photos and their whole instructions are on this kind of paper. But uh, BMAX is the only one I know of that has decal sheets, decal layouts that are like this. Uh, obviously, your Mobius kits are, aren't race cars for the most part, except the uh, NASCAR kits. So let's take a look at what comes in this box. Um, all of these, I didn't open these up before beforehand because I wanted to kind of show this to you. All of them in this kit anyway, I'd have to go look at my crews because I can't remember off the top of my head, but all of the baggies in this kit are these resealable ones where you're, they're not stapled. There's a little adhesive flap here. They're not stapled and they're not glued shut, just like or, uh, trick wrap shut so you can put the parts back in them and not lose the parts out back out of them. So what we have up front here are the wheels uh, for the kit, these are obviously chrome. If we can get this to, let me have to put my hand behind it, I've got too much shine going on. There we go. Uh, these are the 
back wheels, which are chromed, and these are the front wheels, which are just molded in white. They are based, uh, they are for all intents and purposes identical, although the hubs on the chrome wheels are, are a little taller to because obviously the car is a front wheel drive car. Uh, this is correct, guys. If you a lot of people got these kits and they were like, oh my god, they're, they're not, one's plated and one's not. What's going on with that? Uh, keep in mind that uh, these cars, for the most part, uh, had these uh, wheels on the front that were just you know they're, they're, that are heavier they're, they're drive wheels and these ones are lighter out back they're aluminum wheels and for the most part had a polished lip on them and then the you know the five spoke area was painted either a contrasting color or a matching color on this uh, Pia uh, racing car they're both silver so you just paint you know the, or a, you know a non-gloss aluminum so you would have to paint you know the actual center of this and the the the, uh, the center cap the center bolt hub is a different color altogether but you would have to paint these uh, spokes a uh, you know an aluminum or uh, another flat metal color that would match this set of wheels and then either mask it off or if you really want to go do a whole bunch of extra work dechrome the whole thing and then reshoot the outside with some all clad or uh, some of the chrome powder material because these lips on the back should be chrome <laughs> and that tends to be the way most of these civics were done with the chrome lips on the back wheels I've seen a lot of people put these chrome lips on the front wheels because they look cool, but that's not, you know, functionally how they're designed to work. And this other piece in here will be your other chrome tree. This has uh, your uh, front, your taillight buckets, your headlight buckets, and your uh, mirror inserts for the wing mirrors or the outside mirrors, depending on how you like to uh, describe those things. This little uh, baggie here has the mesh for the grill, uh, your poly cap for the uh, tires or for the uh, wheels themselves, you know, fuzz there, and then you have these uh, racing wheels, which uh, if I can get to adjust with that, looks like on the mesh in the background. They have a little bit of a sidewall detail in the sense of having those uh, little, I don't want to call them sipes because sipes would be on the tread, but those little... Uh, Markings on the sidewall. Eh. Got too much glare. That's the problem. There we go. Have those little sidewall uh, sidewall molding detail. There's no actual uh, name for the sidewalls uh, or name for the tires themselves. These are going to be representing, I believe, Adavan wheels. Maybe I'm not sure. There's no tire. Oh, they're Bridgestones. Excuse me. Uh, they are uh, tapered wheels. Which may not be the easiest thing to show you what's still in the bag, but I don't want to lose these. Uh, where they do taper uh, front to back, that gives the car its uh, camber and without actually having to uh, fiddle around with the uh, suspension to make the suspension camber. So that's a nice touch. Make sure that you're putting your wheels on correctly, or else you'll you know mount your wheels backwards, and they'll be cam you'll have a reverse camber situation going on. <coughs> this, of course, would be your uh, window glass. Uh, this has in it the front windshield, the little uh, clear piece that goes between the tail lights, the rear hatch glass, the rear tail lights, the front turn signals, uh, a racing computer type deal, which I'm not, I, I, I will admit I'm not really up on the entirety of the. Uh, what when what goes on with the racing electronics with this with these cars in real life? But it's sort of a racing computer type deal. Uh, you have side glass and you have your front headlights. All of this stuff is uh, well engraved as far as the lens uh, patterns and things like that. Very nicely done. Uh, and like I said, there's there's on some of these uh, pieces there are you know trim you off the paint on the inside as far as actually doing the window trim itself and then the decals apply to the outside glass you have one big bag of stuff here that has pretty much all the rest of the parts so let's go ahead and, and open up this this sucker here so we can figure out which end the seal is on oh, it's on this end all right I'd like to get a nice uh, you know new view. Uh, I'm seeing it for the first time as you guys are. I've actually looked through this one before so I, I shouldn't stumble over the pieces and parts nearly as much as one, one would hope. 
as I do on some of the other things that I've not actually got a chance to look at. You know, the, 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 the Oldsmobile review was pretty rough in, in places because I didn't know what a lot of the parts were. This here will be your last basic parts tree as far as what goes on the body. Uh, front bumper, back bumper, hood, uh, the little rear uh, sp spoiler that goes around the back, top of the back window. Uh, your side trim on this kit is molded separately. That's what this is here. This is obviously indicating that there's going to be future variations of this tooling into possibly other uh, versions of the Honda Civic. <coughs> Excuse me. That will uh, allow it to be other things uh, or other generations of this of the Civic that maintain basically the same body shape, but having separate bumpers and separate hood and separate side trim will allow them to supplement in uh, you know, another body tool or just perhaps different bumpers and things like that to change up what the kit represents without uh, requiring an entire retool. There are, uh, I guess these would pretty much be does fasteners style. They're not really uh, this, you know, like NASCAR cotter pin setups as far as hood pins on here and molded in. Uh, there is effectively no uh, detail on the underside of the hood as far as bracing or anything else like that goes, but this is a curbside kit. I see a lot of people complaining, well, the hood's separate. This should have an engine. Again, this is a molding situation for future variations. The hood is separate because if I want to put a different hood on here that doesn't have this little uh, power bump, so to speak, then I just have to tool up another hood you know, insert. And voila, I've changed the entire uh, flavor of the kit as far as what variation it would be. And I don't have to tool up a whole new body, which would be the case if the kit was a curbside with a molded-in hood. Uh, this is, of course, your uh, your back hitch and your front tow hook. Uh, a couple of little pieces for the interior. And uh, your they're actually on this kit, <clears throat> and it's true in the real thing, there are fuel, fuel fillers for both sides of the car. Uh, they are pretty nicely engraved as well. But the car was designed this way with these dual fuel fillers. That way it could race at any track and you wouldn't have to bring out a whole other car with the fuel filler being on the other side of the car. This chat, this one right here, this big old uh, tree, I think this is tree, tree G, uh, represents pretty much the interior and some of the uh, accessory suspension, if you will. Uh, these are your door cards, your racing seat, um, back hoop of the roll cage. This will be the rear suspension. Uh, I like how VMAX has gone through and drilled, I'll show you this in a second, but I, I just want to describe the whole tree first, has drilled out holes in the suspension, rear suspension arms to, you know, fabricate the sort of uh, um, lowered weight, uh, lighter pieces. You've got windshield wiper frames, your inside mirror, uh, your steering column, uh, these are your hatch clips to hold the back hatch shut. This is the front of the roll cage. Uh, this would be, of course, your uh, would be the lower uh, front half of the suspen of the uh, front suspension. Uh, fire extinguisher, rear window. This is your exhaust in two pieces here. Basically, it's one piece from the manifold to the exhaust pipe, and then the exhaust pipe itself is two pieces. Uh, your let me whoops, slid that the wrong way. Your steering wheel, your uh, front coilover struts for the front suspension, uh, your brakes for the front and the rear, and then your uh, rear coilover for the suspension. This is the uh, the uh, sun shield, basically, for lack of a better term, for your instrument panel. And then this is another piece of the uh, roll caging. So up close and personal here, you'll see that the if we can get this tipped correctly with a little bit of background there so it'll focus, focus, anybody? <laughs> so, there we go, in focus, there's your brake detail for your front and rear brakes. Really nice uh, engraved, uh, you know, drilled uh, real rotor detail there, uh, as well as the, the calipers don't look too bad either. They are, you know, just piss on a plate flat on the back uh, with some injector pin molds like most most racing brake discs have. Uh, let's see, what else was I going to show you? Oh, yes, I was going to show you the suspension arm. So here's the rear suspension arms, and as you see, they're drilled through. Uh, to represent the lighter weight pieces that were used on the race car. Overall, this is uh, pretty good uh, detailing throughout. Here's going to be one of your uh, door cards there showing, you know, 
still got the the, the roller uh you know, uh, window roller on there, so that's a nice touch, although I don't think the window glass obviously worked in these cars. Uh, it's a very basic thing, but then this is a very basic Honda Civic in the first place. Uh, mold lines are pretty decent. I mean, you, you're, they're where you'd expect as far as, you know, they're, they're they're splitting the round pieces of the roll cage and stuff like that. But all in all, the molding is really well done. I especially like that. I like the brakes there. The brakes do have a little bit of a flow pattern as far as the, the caliper, the, uh, rotor detail you can sort of see when you look at it in person you can see the way the plastic flowed but you're going to paint that so it's not going to make any difference uh and that brings us to the last tree of this uh kit and that is basically all of your uh accessory suspension pieces and the in the big chunks here uh these are as we go this way with it take us back and slide this this way there we go this is your Rear suspension, sort of uh, the shock, the coilover shock mounts. This is going to be your front steering arm, uh, your front uh, drive shaft arm, for lack of a better term. Remember, this is a front wheel drive car. Uh, this is sort of your your torque tube for your suspension, or for your uh, transmission rather. Uh, your outside mirrors, the front. Uh, wait, wait, hang on for a second. I think I'm I'm losing myself in suspension pieces here. I don't want to say it's the wrong thing. Let's go page back through here. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I was right. This is sort of the this is another rear suspension pieces uh, rear suspension piece. Uh, appears to be more of a stabilizer bar or a strut bar than it is anything else because uh, this the one the original one I talked to we talked to you or pointed at rather was indeed the. Uh... Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. This one over here is your is your is your struck tower where you're gonna mount your coilovers off of. This is the rear axle. That makes more sense. This is gonna be the rear axle. Uh, this is your handbrake, your gear shift. Uh, your these are the radio antennas, itty bitty things for the uh, for the non photo etch. And then there's another piece of racing computer here. Here's your dashboard again. We'll, we'll bring all this stuff up close in a second. Your dashboard, uh, your interior pant, your interior bucket. Now your 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 seat riser is over here because this is a left hand or a right hand drive race car from Japan. So keep that in mind. And then this is your chassis over here. This car does include the bottom half of the engine molded into the. Uh, molded into the chassis pan however it is mostly free if you look through there you see it's how much blue you can see it's basically molded in on uh, both sides of the uh, engine uh, one on sort of the uh, oil pan side and one on the what would be the transmission side holding it in there but other than that it's free around so you can paint detail paint that easily without having to do what I call the black pit of doom where you're trying to paint a black you know, th black uh, surface around the engine, and then paint the engine, or, uh, uh, you know, like it's rising out of a swamp, basically. Uh, there's actually, and I didn't even notice this the first time I looked at it, there's actually a very nice, but I don't know how well I can get this to show. There you go, you got like the bottom of the uh, radiator and, and a part of a cooling fan. That's a very nice touch right there. I didn't even notice that when I bought this kit. So that's very nice. Uh, so... Again, very well detailed, very uh, very uh, good quality. All the engraving on this uh, chassis pane is really well done. There are no uh, divots or sink marks in it that I can see. All the ejector pins are on the other side, on the tops, you know, the top end here that you're never going to see. That same thing sort of goes with the uh, interior pan. We'll take a look at that up close here. Your interior pan, again, nicely engraved, uh, very nice representation of sort of a stripped-out Civic interior. All the roll pan stampings are there and stuff like that, so it's not just flat like a lot of uh, kits are. You have some nice wiring detail going down here. <laughs> Make it so you can see it, and I'm not just looking at it, but you got some nice uh, wiring detail going down the... Uh, the, what would be the passenger side of the transmission tunnel, or just really just a, a hump at that point, because obviously it's a front-wheel drive car. And then, I know it's going to be upside down, guys, but bear with me. It's Here's your uh, dashboard detail, so you've got your three pedals. Mind you, it's a Japanese car, so your clutch is on the quote-unquote wrong side of this you know equation. Your clutch is, over, is this one over here, but it just looks kind of funny. Uh, you've got a, the stripped-out interior, as far as there not being a radio. There, there's Actually, and I'm not sure how well it'll show, there's actually 
uh, engraved little divots there where the knobs should go for the ventilation control, and then you got a little bit of racing uh, control here. There are decals for the gauges here. There's tiny little uh, raised, uh, you know, gauge bezels basically, but uh, there's there are individual decals for the gauges themselves. Uh, I will say that there is a tiny, tiny little sink mark in the foot of the clutch pedal, as well as uh, the front uh, axle here. Oops, might help if you guys saw what I saw rather than just some random thing. <laughs> See if I put this here if it'll help. Focus. No, not don't focus on the. <laughs> Don't focus on the suspend on the chassis. Focus on this piece right here. There you go. There's a there's a nice little divot, nice sink mark right there. Nice being a sarcastic term. Nice uh, sink mark right there in the uh, top of the front axle. So you have to take care of that. Uh, but beyond that, the engraving itself again is clean. Everything is nicely molded. Everything has good detail. So let's flip around to this side here. Here's your uh, your your. Uh, transmission and it's uh, basically it's torque uh, mount to keep the transmission from blowing off. I know it's a Civic but it was a racing Civic. They actually have pretty decent power in these things. Um, they're getting 200 horsepower out of these motors so that's eh, nothing to mess around with and, and for a uh, 1.6 liter uh, four banger you need a little bit of torque tube there to get a hold of things. But like I said all really well done, really nicely molded. There's no it doesn't smell funny. It doesn't look funny. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm not tasting it, but it doesn't, you know, have any of the problems that that you know some kits have, where you kind of wonder about the manufacturing process involved. And last but not least would be the body. Oh, let's get the body out of its little baggie here. I chose this for this kit to review next because we just did the domestic kit with the Oldsmobile. And then uh, this was the kit I said I was going to build for the box stock build, and I obviously haven't even touched it yet, but we're going to get there eventually. <coughs> so here's your body. It's, it's a it's a Honda Civic. Uh, it is. I will say a couple of things about this up front. This entire kit uh, and the the Chevy Cruze before it have a. Uh, I'm trying to determine if this is. There's a little bit of warp to the body here, I think. Let me hang on, guys, while I move my... Nope, it's flat. All right, it's just this. I was going to say, yeah, it's got a little bit of a, a, a bend to it, but no, it's just the poster board. The actual body's fine. Um, there's a, this is not a polished tool, and neither is the B-Max Cruise, which we'll review on another day. Uh, there is a little texture here. It's just sort of not... Again, the, the Cruise is a lot worse, actually, as far as texture goes. But it's not, like glass smooth. It's not real world polished, uh, but it's not Mobius uh, texture where it was like sandpaper. You can't can't even hear it. It's not uh, but it's, just keep that in mind when you get it. It's not going to be like, you know, glossy. Uh, there's, of course, a uh, dunnage here in the front as well as dunnage out here in the back to keep the roof from collapsing during shipping. Uh, nice touch because, who you know, <laughs> really, who wants a crushed model? Uh, this is, of course, a Japanese spec Civic, so it's going to have the side repeaters on it here that uh, would not be on a U.S. spec car. Uh, let's see if it'll show, because I'm going white on white on white here. There you go. I got the... Uh, the detail on the bolted over uh, gas cap, and then there are, of course, holes on both sides of the rear end here for the uh, gas filler itself. And those as well, if we can have a focusing thing here, uh, Elliot will always say, trying to show you a white body is the hardest thing to do because the camera doesn't want to focus on that. There you go, you got some uh, nice rivet detail around the actual fuel filler ahead in the back. Uh, this little divot back here is for the, the the hood latch or the trunk latch, basically. Now, a lot of people have pointed out that it's a curbside kit. Why does it have, in, you know, a, 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 a you know, a uh, engine bay detail if it's not going to have an engine in it? 
Again, perhaps an engine version is something they're considering in the future. Perhaps BMAX knows that there are a plethora of Honda engines available both in kit form and resin form that if you wanted to put one in here bad enough, you could. Know that this, uh, this whole setup up front here is not exactly prototypically correct for this actual Civic. Uh, it's sort of uh, half-assing, if you will, uh, because 95% of the people who build this, as far as the Asian market, not the U.S. market, where people are going to try to turn this back into some sort of quasi-street car, but the Asian market, where they're going to build this thing as our actual race car, are going to not have an engine in it, and they're going to make it, uh, you know, just curbside with the hood on it, so it really doesn't matter what's in here at all. You do have uh, some nice little, uh, oh, geez, that was, <laughs> Glare, Glare City, folks. Wow, I didn't expect that to come up like that. <laughs> Try to get this to come out on an angle now so it doesn't glare out. There you go. You have some, uh, you know, co some cooling uh, fan en engraving here. That'll show basically through the back of the mesh on the front bumper. So you have that there. Uh, so that you just don't have a big gaping maw with no detail. So that's nice. I will say the one thing about this kit that I've noticed, and I've looked at this thing two or three different times now while I've plotted out how I was going to build it and how I was going to tackle various uh, parts of trying to get things done between driving and, and being home and stuff like that. There is not a single mold line on this body. And I don't know how they managed to do this uh, other than, well, it's a 2016 tool done by professionals rather than uh, amateurs. And I won't point fingers or name names, Ravel, but, or Mobius, but there are not, is not, are not, will not be uh, mold lines. It is perhaps the reason why this has not a polished finish. Perhaps you lose the mold line and the little itty bitty bit of texture that's on this body. Uh, the panel lines are kind of faint. You'd want to go through and, and rescribe the panel lines around the doors, especially because those were pretty much the only panel lines on here. Uh, you know, you'd have, whoops, uh, you'd have as I throw it away, these panel lines back here for the hatch. Uh, you know, the hatch would pretty much open from here up, so you'd want to engrave these ones a little deeper. But other than that, I mean, it looks like a Civic. It's 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 a nice, you know, got a nice little Civic-y, you know, look and feel about it. I, I think it's a nicely molded car. Uh, I've seen some people in Japan say that there are a few things that are not exactly prototypically correct about this body. I don't know enough about Civics to comment on that. Uh, the glass on this kit does install from the outside, uh, so that's why you got sort of a a lip running around the uh, inner parts of the, the fender, and the, and if you look at this, uh, the side here is sort of sunk in uh, from the from the rest of the molding because your glass is going to fit in from the outside. So don't get all freaked out and be like, oh, there's something wrong with my kit, because there's not. Um, I guess that's uh, pretty much it for this part of the uh, review, guys. Let's uh, flip up and we'll discuss. Okay, so the good, uh, pretty much everything. Uh, I don't mean, and as I try to do more and more reviews, I, you know, you'll get where I'm at as far as how I feel about things, and of course, a lot of this is subjective too. Uh, I know this isn't a kit for everybody as far as subject matter and things like that, but you know, if it is something that you're interested in, know that it's a really good kit. I haven't built it yet, so I can't say, ooh, it's to me a light quality as far as the build, but as far as the molding goes, and as far as everything else goes, and the lack, complete total lack of mold lines on the body. Yeah, it's, it's certainly right up there. But again, it's a $38 model kit uh, as far as its shelf price goes. I'm not sure what they'll sell it for in the United States. Probably somewhere in the mid-40s or maybe even close to 50. Uh, but know that you're going to get a model kit that's it's certainly close to being worth that money uh, depending on how you feel about curbside. So now some people view curbsides as being simple, simple, ugly models and blah, 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 blah. I think this model kit pre presents a fairly well- uh, thought out, but yet not overly complex uh, approach to a curbside. It has a you know a lot of parts, so to speak, in the somewhere in the probably 85 to 90 part range. But there's no engine, and all the parts that are there relate well to each other. It's not a lot of uh, over engineering that you see with uh, some kits. Excellent molding and engraving throughout. Excellent use of uh, ejector pins for the most part. We talked about, uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but there's a very little bit of, of tooling mess up as far as uh, sink marks, ejector pins. Nothing appears to be warped as far as I can tell. So it all looks uh, to be 
a really well thought out and really well designed kit. This is something that BMAX uh, had had coming now for probably about eight months prior to it being released, if not a whole year. So you can see the work that went into this. And it's certainly been one of their best selling kits to date as far as throughout their history. The F1 car sold real well as well. Uh, the T64 rally car, the older, like mid 80s uh, Celica, that has sold real well. Uh, but this kit, like I said, you can't find it unless you're willing to really overpay for it on eBay right now. Do not pay 50 bucks for it. They will do another run of it eventually. I would not be surprised that sometime this summer when the uh, 280 RS Nissan Rally car comes out, uh, that we'll get a run of everything from BMAX because uh, this kit sold out. The CA64 sold out. Uh, the, the first two uh, early versions of the Celica are sold out. So they've they're they're uh, they've certainly managed to make their money back. The only thing that really hasn't sold well, ironically, is the Chevy Cruze. And uh, you know, I've done certainly done my part. I have 11 of them, so uh, can't complain. <laughs> they can't complain about me not buying any anyway. The bad. Okay, well, the tire, well, the tires don't have any sidewall detail. I don't know if they have any sidewall detail in real life. I'd have to go look up pictures of this car specifically because some uh, cars have, like, you know, the, the white tire stencil type of thing done to them. Uh, I'd have to look at these decals to see if there actually are tire decals on here, and I just didn't see them. Uh, but it's a budget sort of division of, of racing. Uh, I don't know. They have racing tires, but I don't necessarily know that the, the tires would have any kind of, uh, you know, engraving on them. If you look at a NASCAR tire, for example, most of that stuff's chalk marks, and it's, you know, the, the sort of, for lack of a better term, tampo printing that they put the Goodyear Eagle logo on with. There's not really any sidewall detail to those tires, per se, and I assume that that's pretty much the same case here. Uh, the other two bad things you want to look at that way, again, you have the small, tiny little sink mark on the clutch pedal. I'm not even sure that's worth fixing because who's ever going to see it again? Uh, the more prominent one is the sink mark that's on the front axle uh, at the CV joint. That would have to be fixed, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of contest build with it. Um, and then, you know, everything else is pretty much regular cleanup. You know, all your all your circular parts are going to have mold lines on them, just like any other kit ever would be, because that's just the nature of a two-part mold. <laughs> the Ugly. You know what? I really had to sit down and think about this. The Ugly? I don't know that the... Could it be... I, it, I'm going out and on, like, I'm, I'm grasping for straws. This is a really well-done model kit. The ugly, the people don't understand the fact that the two sets of wheels are different, and they're all, well, they're not all, but a, a large amount of American builders are bitching about the fact that one side's chrome, that one side isn't, when they should be that way, or you're going to have to re-chrome the lip anyway. Uh... I usually discount anyone complaining about that when they immediately mount the chrome-plated ones on the front wheels because that's the wrong position for them. Uh, curbside, I don't care if that's a big deal for you. You weren't buying this kit in the first place. Uh, the engine bay being wrong, yes, it's not correct, prototypically correct for an EF3 Civic. Uh, it's sort of a combination of several different Civics, which is probably meaning there are going to be future versions of this kit as maybe an EK4 or an EK5. Uh, I think EK6 at that point is too, different, is too much of a different car. Uh, but, and maybe EK5 might be too much of a different car, but be prepared for there to be future versions of this, because at this point we're, of course, at three of the late 80s Civics. We're going to have two of the McLaren MP4 2 uh, F1 cars. These tools, even though they're being done by a small company on, you know, not a small budget, but a limited budget as far as what they have to work with, they are built, they are, you know, planning for more than one version of everything that they do. Um, and then everything else that's ugly about this kit has really been Honda fanboys on Facebook acting like they know more than they do and, uh, you know, trying to turn it back into streetcars, which isn't anything to do with this model kit, it's just people's attitudes. So, uh, that's. Like I said, grasping for straws. This is a really, really well done model kit, and if the subject matter interests you, I think you'd be really happy with it. All right, guys, so that's it for the B Max Aoshima 
Honda Civic EF3 Group A Japanese uh, Touring Championship race car. I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, perhaps it helped you or hindered you in, in your purchasing decision as far as buying one of these kits in the future. Uh, give BMAX a, a look uh, if they've got some stuff that's, that's uh, interesting to you because they really are uh, doing really good stuff as far as their kits go. And this one, uh, as far as I can tell, without building it, seems to it looks it looks out of the box, uh, really nice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review, and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side.